And as I say, Graham Souness will be talking about where Rangers go now. Ali, I don't know where Rangers go now. Where Rangers go now. Uh, I know it's, um, it's an impossible question to answer, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm really looking forward to leaving that one to Graham. I'll be listening to Graham's answer on that particular question. Yes. Because I'm swerving it, because that was, I was so disappointing the weekend, mate. I mean, I was devastated. Celtic, they didn't even look as though they had a second gear, mate, you know? And yeah. We're just, we're just lacking leadership. Well, I wonder if it makes Stephen Gerrard's achievements in uh, 2021 uh, looking more impressive with, with each passing season. Do you know what somebody said to me, Jim? Um, and I thought, I kind of brushed it off at the time, but the more I think about it, that particular season, which was a fantastic achievement, I just wonder the fact that there was no people at the games... I'm just wondering if I actually really did help Rangers mm. and, 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 and more than I thought. I thought to myself it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. Yeah. However, I look at some of the players nowadays and I think they're affected by it and they don't seem to be handling the pressure. And I think if we could, that, maybe that particular season playing behind closed doors actually suited them yeah, to a sure. certain degree. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I think it's a good point. It's a good point. It's got to change, hasn't it? It has to change, They've mate. got to get to away fans uh, at that oh, picture. Oh, that's got to happen as well. So from 10, it's myself, Simon Jordan, Graham Sooners and Turkey al al Sheikh. Look at at Celtic Park again as they have been doing on a regular basis when the two met at Celtic yesterday and they did just that they powered past Rangers by three goals to nil and now go five points clear of their Glasgow rivals post-match uh, Philip Clement and uh, Brendan Rodgers had differing emotions as you might expect don't forget what, what happened last week so it was the best result in, uh, in around four years for the club so uh, it's not that black and white it's grey okay it's may maybe more dark grey today and that's normal for me also I don't want to lose with 3-0 nobody wants to lose that way but we need to take the right conclusions out of that our pressing has been really really good and for a lot of the game it was today you've seen that hunger and that ability to double up around players so um, so I was really really pleased with that but there's other aspects that we will analyse when we, we look back on the game where we, where we can improve but I think you see the level that the players are at and the mentality that they're, they're at we're in a really good place but it's, it's so early in the season and there's a lot more growth to come 5-0 firm matches for Philippe Clement in all competition, Graham. Four losses and one draw. So at the moment, it's all Celtic. And it doesn't like, look like changing anytime soon. No, they have the better players. They have the better strikers. And I think that's... that's um, if, you win, if you're going to win football matches, you have to put the ball in the back of the net. And right now, and I said this last year, that they have better strikers than what we have. But it's more than that, isn't it? Is it? Can I read some stats to you from yesterday's game? So forget the result, you don't know the result. You don't know the result. So Celtic had 53% possession, Rangers had 47 at Parkhead. That's not bad for an away team. Celtic had 14 shots, Rangers had 13 shots. Celtic had four on target, Rangers had four on target. Celtic had five off target, we had five off target. Does that sound like a game that's been one-sided to you? There's no doubt about it, there's a gap. That gap for me, looking at it, is the Celtic of better strikers. That, those stats are not suggesting that they are absolutely turning up and mullering Rangers at Parkhead. But they are, there is a gap. They have opened a gap in did them. You, did you watch the Man United vs Liverpool game where the stats were Man United had can eight I, shots and, and, and can, Liverpool had 11. They both had three see, shots on target and Man United had 53% possession. We, Yet you, we, you, you watched those stats and those stats were your argument. We, no, we finished last year second behind Celtic. At the end of the season, they spent 28 million, we spent 14 million, and although they brought a lot of money in. So we're chasing them, but we're spending half the amount of money in, in the summer months. So there is a gap. Rangers are not in a healthy financial situation right now. Celtic are in a far better financial situation, but allows them to go out and cherry-pick players like they got good money for that O'Reilly, take a chance on someone where Rangers are buying under pressure that everyone to buy has to come in and do a job right now. And that's, that's a difficult situation to be in. What's your take on it? I, I just, I'm just uh, listening to Graham reel out stats. 
Well, look, I, they're, not, they're not my stats. These, these, are, these are facts. But you um, would never use stats, Graham, unless you want to advance an argument. So I've just given you the stats of Man United, and the, and the actual outcome of the game was that we've just discussed the fact that Liverpool were in a different zip code to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that the same conclusion, despite you wanting to well, use the stats to advance I, an argument, I, I is the situation. The game, I watched the show. game yesterday, and I didn't... Yeah, Rangers didn't play well yesterday. They didn't, they, when they did carry a threat, they didn't have the people to finish it off. There is a, there is a gap that exists. But, but how many players would, would make that gap less? How many would make that change the other way in Rangers' favour? It's not a lot. I don't it's know, three, it's, the debate it's three or four players and 50 million quid that Rangers don't have right now. The regularly rages with you. And it's a, you get all prickly about it, and then you start flinging around um, superlatives about people not being football people. When we've had this debate about the gap between the two clubs, and we've had this I'm, fierce I'm debate, and you said, gap. and you said, absolutely not, absolutely not, absolutely I'm accepting as a gap. I said that last year they are better gap. strikers. Vast gap. Well, in your opinion, or in the results' opinion, yeah, if you're in the results' in, business in, and you don't ever in, beat this side, your, there's a vast gap, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. There is an enormous. Listen. Oh, there is now. Okay. No, it's not an enormous gap. There's a gap. But in your opinion, it's not. It's, in your opinion, you think it's an enormous one. I don't, and that's that's trying to w watch that game yesterday objectively. I didn't see it, a one a one sided affair. They were clinical in their finishes. They finished their goals well. Um, you know, there's a couple of goals. The third goal is a deflection that our goalkeeper couldn't get to. The second one was a, the first one was avoidable. The second one was avoidable. Um, I think the big goalkeeper got his, his positional sense wrong because that would normally be a food and drink safe for him. But there's no doubt about it. Celtic deserved to win yesterday. Three but goals, yes, to finish Liverpool that fans will tell you this Monday morning. There's only one stat in town. We beat United 3-0. There's only one stat in town from Celtic Park. Celtic won 3-0. Yeah, I'm accepting that. They deserve to win. That's it only an all-important stat. They deserve to win. I started by saying goals are the most important thing in football, actually. They yeah. change the games. So other stats don't really matter, do they? No, goals are the ones that matter. So I'm when did you watch, reel off the I'm stats not, you I'm reeled not, off? I'm not watching the game yesterday and sitting there feeling we're getting absolutely tonked here. I didn't, I didn't feel that. Maybe that's because I'm a, a balloon nose. But I didn't see Celtic wave after wave of attack. Our goalkeeper having to make lots and lots of saves. I didn't see that yesterday. But, but before you told like, us there's not much between the two. Well, what, now, what, what is much? Are you telling us is there is a gap no, between not. Celtic gap, and Rangers? It's not that big a gap. There is a There's gap between Celtic and Rangers. But now you're quid. saying there is a Let gap. Finish. There is a gap. I, I think I accepted that last year when we had this conversation. But I don't see it with an enormous gap. I've been, I've been in Glasgow. I've worked here for five years. I know how it works. You lose an old firm game, everything is wrong. Everything is wrong, and I would plead with the Rangers supporters right now that turned up at Ibrox and were critical of their team and their manager to take a deep breath and calm down, because that only benefits one side, and that only benefits Celtic. Get behind your manager now and get behind your football club. But, how, I, when did, you but say, how do they do that? Rangers you, have forgotten how to win you, at Celtic when Park. When you see a big gap... Five when, successive home league wins at Celtic Park now gap, in this fiction. When you see a big gap, you're talking three players, maybe four players. But Rangers don't have the finances to go out and the manager is operating with one hand tied behind his back, he can't go out and buy the kind of players that, are, that can make that jump. So, because of that, you can only see the gap widening. Well, I, I, you know, I don't you? have a crystal ball. And that's a question, it's not a statement. But, can you only you see, see the gap widening? If you go back to when Celtic did nine in a row, everyone, everyone maybe the media wasn't so, so intrusive and fierce then, maybe they, would be, they wouldn't have been saying, it can never be... Rangers are finished. They can never challenge again. And then when Rangers did nine in a row, would the Celtic supporters have been saying, oh, we can never challenge again? It's football. You've, you're from Gaza. You know how it works there. Um, nothing is forever. That will turn. It's just, hopefully, if you're a Rangers supporter like I am, it's sooner rather than later. It's football. Mm. Do you can see the Rangers' financial situation, though, is going to make life pretty yes. darn difficult yeah, very difficult but to not get impossible. to the level where Celtic very have got difficult. themselves very difficult but not impossible who knows what's around the corner for Rangers do you think this has become like almost a, the most predictable fixture you could imagine Simon did you think you, before the game well, you yesterday have, you're, no, looking just, three, uh, you're, uh, looking, you're looking at a 3-0 and you're looking at you're looking at 3-4-0 it's going to be Celtic nothing, there's nothing in Rangers form this season from drawing 0-0 nil -nil with Dundee at the beginning of the season to losing to Dynamo Kiev who are no powerhouse in European football and don't have a particularly bigger turnover Hearts than Rangers. 
Hearts, sorry, yeah. Um, um, that, so you look at Rangers and you go, you've drawn with Hearts at the beginning of the season. You've got knocked out of the Europa League um, by... Um, or sorry, after the Champions League qualification by Dynamo Kiev, who are, don't have a bigger turnover than Rangers. They have the same sort of level of turnover. And you think to yourself, well, if you can't land a glove domestically on, on Celtic, because we have this debate frequently about whether Rangers and Celtic can be considered to be close to one another. If you never beat your opposition, never beat them, then you have to say that the gap is significant. Now, the argument then is, is what do you do to try and achieve things? You try and get into the Champions League. So you, you draw a team like Dynamo Kiev that you get a result with, away from home, you bring them back to Ibrox, or to Hamden in this instance, and you get knocked out of the Champions League. So any opportunities that you have to be able to bridge the gap economically are taken away by performances on the field. And that has to come down to the group of players and the manager that you've got to be able to overcome some of these things. Because I don't think Celtic are wonderful. I don't think they're great. I don't think this is the greatest Celtic side we've ever seen. Um, and I think that this just shows you where Rangers are. I mean, Clement, to me... I, this time, well, he wasn't here this time last year. I think everybody's right about Michael Bill. I don't know why they would have employed Michael Bill. I don't know what the thinking behind that was, because Michael Bill didn't bring any intellectual capital into Rangers. The scale of the job was far too big for him, and the scale of the Sunderland job was far too big for him. So, Christ on a bike, so would Rangers be. Yet they let themselves sit there for a year and waste time. That's down to the ownership. That's down to the recruitment policies they've got there. Clement, to me, looks like he's got the chops. But you've got to give the fella some tools. Mm. And if this, this, goes, this goes back beyond... Michael Beal as well. You know, Stephen Gerrard won one league. Stephen yeah. Gerrard was there three years. But he did win a league. He was there three years. You can win nine trophies in three years. For a Rangers and a Celtic manager, winning one trophy in nine years normally doesn't keep you in a job. But is that coming point. from a fair position, though, given the fact that the erosion of Rangers, irrespective of whether it was their fault so, or not... So I'm saying it goes back beyond Michael Beal. But yeah, there is there. a gap, but There's it's not that big a gap. gap. Hang on, if you win a league, Graham, surely you should kick on so what I'm saying is, you've climbed that mountain, you've crossed the Rubicon, you've won the league after all this time. Right? So you're now you're in build mode again. You've well, re-established yourself. I don't know the numbers. Backwards. I don't know the I numbers, don't... but my understanding is that Michael Beale had money to spend, and that money wasn't spent wisely. And the most important thing you hear me say every week when I'm with you, the most important thing at a football club is getting your recruitment right. They didn't. Whatever money they had, they appeared to have blown it. Let's put it out there. Graham is saying there is a gap, but it's not an gap. almighty gap. And the gap can be closed, in your of view. Of course it gets football, Jim. 03717 Handling the pressure. And I think if we could, that maybe that particular season playing behind closed doors actually suited them. Yes, sure.